Well, we want to thank you for inviting us to be a part of Laity Sunday, a day that celebrates a ministry of all Christians to love God and neighbor. Today we lift up the vocation of all, and all means all, to follow the way of Jesus that leads others to him. Today we want to affirm and perhaps help us rediscover practices that will keep us walking daily in God's presence. Today, we want to particularly pay attention and thank our parents, the laity of the church, all who serve in leadership and service roles. We want to show our appreciation for our spiritual mentors, Sunday school teachers, Bible school teachers, youth leaders, camp counselors, and the traditions of our church that together have taught us lessons and Bible verses that help support and sustain us through every challenge we have in life. So for me, there's so many verses I had a hard time picking just a few before I go into the reading of the scripture, but the verses that just stay with us every day. So one like Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. For everything, there is a season. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Was that the very first Bible verse you learned in Sunday school like me? It's like the very first one because it's a promise we can all stand on all the time. I'm going to be like Paul. I'm going to dance across the stage here because I love to watch him. He just is so scripture. Another one of my favorite is, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Of course, that comes from Matthew. Today, Sam will talk a little bit about Micah. If you look at Crossroads Church downtown, it's written right down their building. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. We are strengthened when we stand on the promises of God, staying in his presence. In today's gospel reading, Paul's encouragement to Timothy centers on their shared appreciation for the scriptures in which they were formed. In their case, it was likely that they used the Greek translation of the Old Testament. But it is true for us today as well. Paul encourages us to seek not just what we want to hear, but to listen for what might challenge us. Listen to the word of God found in the New Testament. And if you'd like to join um, it's in the Pew Bible on page 1,697. I am going to be reading from the New International Version. I believe it's pretty similar. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 through chapter 4. As for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your health situation, endure hardship, 
do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, Sam will share some of the ways that his parents and teachers taught him to walk in the presence of God. Honored to be here and hope that I can give you something that is in my heart and mind. I come from a family, large family, six siblings. My mother was my prince. She is always the person that has kept me who I am. And I loved her very much. As a child, my parents took us to church every Sunday and participated with the of communion that was our part of our tradition. And my mother made us become that person. We gathered as a family, both at home and with my grandparents, grandparents from one side, the Italians, the grandparents from the other side, who were from Sicily. I grew up with them. I was the youngest in my family, and my family was everything for me. That was all I needed. We always began our teaching of the Holy Scripture and God being with us through prayer. My parents led the way by participating in the loving God through daily lives. We went to church on Sundays and holy days and other days that was probable for us to go. My mother, well, she had to put up with me, and, and that, was, that was bad enough for her, but she was a wonderful lady, and I, she lives in my heart all, always. In school, I was, went off and wanted to go to a Catholic school. I don't know why, but that's what I wanted. And my parents gave me that opportunity. I grew up at St. Anthony's in, southern, in the southern part of this town. My parents were very religious. Uh, but the, let me put it this way. My mother was very religious and made sure that my father was always at Mass too. My parents led the way by participating in the loving of God through their daily lives. We went to church on Sunday, on holy days, and other masses every time that there was one someplace. It has been a tradition. Life to be in church, to practice what I learned from God. In addition to the messages of God in our home, my siblings and I, I had four sisters and a brother that came along when I was ready to go to high, high uh, went off to the monastery, but uh, those were my, my six other people in the family. I decided I wanted to become a religious 
education teacher. So I entered a monastery. I was, I turned 20 in that, at that time. Uh, I know that for sure because I had, I had to leave there uh, and go into town by myself on a big bus. Don and I was at uh, uh, just outside of Washington, D.C., scared to death because there was noise and houses, and I, as a, I was a point of, of, of being in a place what was quiet, and you didn't talk, and you didn't sing. So there I was, out on the street, waiting for a bus to come and pick me up, to take me to some place in Washington so that I could sign up to be... Selective service in the draft. In the priesthood. I remember we lived in a huge house. I mean, there were, uh, in my first class uh, of, of the brothers, there were 60 of us. I was one of the youngest ones. But I went to where my house was, scared to death at being in Washington, D.C. It was a lot. No, I mean, keep in mind, I'd just been in a, in a monastery for probably at that point uh, three, day, three days. Quiet. Nothing was ever said out loud, except at the appropriate times. But I went to sign up for the reg registered for the for the draft, and I was afraid I was going to miss the bus. So I jumped up as soon as I could on the street. And first bus come. One bus would come, and I'd say, "Is this going here to the monastery?" No, no, no. You have to wait a minute. But eventually, a bus came. It took me back to where I, I, I remember. I lived in a big monastery. Uh, the house was very miles, not miles, but ten yards from the street. I got off the bus. I was sitting up by the driver and said, tell me when to get off, please. I need to go there to the monastery. So he did. I got off the bus and I ran all the way back to the house that we lived in. I was scared to death of being in that noisy place, having been in a place where you didn't talk most of the time. In the monastery, there were rituals established to intentionality be in the presence of God every minute of every day of everything we did. Every minute of every day of everything we did. I was 10 years old, 12. Seven. I just got to draft. That's how old I was. There were rituals established in intentionality to be in the presence of God every minute of every day, living in silence. That was our role. We lived in silence. Rarely were we able to t talk. Rarely. And when we did talk, we had a routine. To live Jesus in our hearts, one would say, and I would say, forever. And whatever had to happen, we, he talked to us, this whatever I was doing there, and within seconds, when it was done, we went back to work. We started in the chapel, the novice master would lead us in prayer. Then he would break off from the community prayer to individual prayer. He was a wonderful man. 
he lived. Uh, I took Teresa with me because he was many years later. Because I wanted her to see him. And I wanted her to have an idea of all of these men who had sat in front of him so he could feel the strength of that community. Next we went to breakfast, after that went to breakfast obviously, uh, went through our routines, usually the novice master would offer the prayer before the meal. Then there was always a reading during we read. Somebody got up, came up here and read to everybody else who was eating, not talking, but eating. The master, the novice master would offer the prayer before the meal. Then there was always a reading during the, re during the meal. We, we ate in silence. We listened to the call of God that the, brother, that the, ma that the master uh, priest had told us to do. After Mass, we prayed. Then we went into the working day our, of our assignments. Now, I was not a very... You know, I was 18 years old. Um, I was not very good at anything, really. Uh, you know, I was almost a caddy for eight years of my life. When I got there, I had to start doing things with your hands. Well, I, I threw a ball, and I knew how to do that. I could bat a ball. But the rest of it I had to learn again. Before prayer, the novice master would lead us in prayer. I need her and all the time. So. Do you want your glasses on? No, I'm okay. fine. Do you want, you want to just she wanted to know if I wanted my glasses on. Glasses. I just I've had them on for. I know. What? These two cataract weeks. surgeries make it a little tricky, don't they? Why don't you start right here, and then you can just keep going. I'll take that first page, and that way then you can, that's what you don't have to There you go, this one. Start right, right here, and then go on. Okay. Well, certainly we'll be on time. Then there's chapel, saying prayers, scripture readings. After dinner, we went into their groups of to follow a brother to the novice master on a recreation, what was called the recreation of rule. We went outside, we, sat, we walked in groups, but we could only talk about what we read, nothing else. That never always happened, but you know, we were a bunch of kids, and, and so it was easy for us to vary off and do some other things. I never did that. I know the semester wouldn't let me do that. First, I was called to teach and serve in my ch church community. That's after I got home from the monastery. I loved the monastery. I loved being in the presence of those men, young people. But I loved my novice master. He was saintly. He was a saint. He had been a novice master for 30 years. At one point, I took Teresa with me when he was ready to die. I took Teresa with me so he, she could see this man sitting in a chair by, surrounded by hundreds of God people, guys, who loved him and worshipped him. It was an experience I wanted her to have. After three years in the monastery, I felt called to return home to serve my community. I took with, with me the spiritual practices 
the deep understanding of my relationship with God and his love for all, all people equally into my work life. As a teacher, it was easy. I loved being in the classroom with kids. It was wonderful. I participated in many roles in the church, in particularly teaching children and youth in religious education practices, leading worship services, serving as a liturgist, and, Stephen, and became a Stephen minister. Professionally, I started in public education, teaching and coaching youth. I can't say it's my first along the way. I have always been passionate about teaching, and early on, I felt a call to become more active in social justice issues. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God was more than just the verse of scripture. It was a call to action. And action I did. This was right after the assassination of Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy. And I was teaching at Canton South and I decided that it was time to do something else. And I left that teaching role that I love very much and went out into the public scheme of things and helped try to turn things around. Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy became my heroes. <clears throat> Saying prayers and scripture reading, after dinner, we went to into groups to follow. <laughs> That's why, you have, that's why I have her here, is this. I'm, I'm, I'm just the assistant here. Um, so, when, sorry, do you want to She's keeping me on time. So. I'm trying. Just start yeah. right here. Okay. I come from a large family. Uh, five sisters. Yeah. I was the oldest. The only boy. Yeah. You need to go. This is the part when you started telling me to talk about Richard Moore because you're doing yeah. some of stuff. Throughout my life, growing spiritually has always been at the heart of my life. It's who I am. It's what I am. And when I die, it'll be that way. After I retired from full-time work, I applied and was accepted into a long-term sp spiritual study with Richard Rohr, Catholic priest who has a mission out in uh, little of uh, someplace west. And I went to his was the Action and contemplation in Albuquerque, New Mexico. During the summers, we met with other scholars to discern, discuss, and grow with other spiritual leaders. I spent multiple summers at the, at the center, listening, discussing, reading, and studying and developing actions needed for a more socially and just society. The work of the spiritual leaders from the center has helped me grow in my understanding of who I am and who God is. Kind of love and grace that only He can give to us. Today, 
and every day. I have to pay attention to walking in the presence of God. That's the first thing I learned in the monastery. Walk in the presence of God. So may we each take time this week to take to thank those who have provided spiritual instruction for us, nurturing and guidance for us as we become stronger disciples for Christ's kingdom. Together we say, Amen. Amen.